In this video, we're going to be looking at graph transformations. Now you might have seen this written in many questions, y equals fx. Now all that means is a general form for any graph. For example, that fx could be 2x, it could be quadratic, for example, x squared plus 3x plus 5. It could be many things. But we're just generally talking about all types of graph, y equals fx, a function of x. So let's look at some graph transformations. I'm going to start off by looking at some transformation in the y-axis. So we've got fx plus 3. Now look back at the general equation. You've got y equals fx. So that fx just means y. So you can think of this as just y plus 3. Now what's going to happen if you're adding 3 to your y values? You'll simply expect your graph to move up in the y direction. By 3 of course. So let's look at a general coordinate on a graph and see what happens. So I've got the coordinate 2, 5. So the x value 2 will stay the same. But the y value 5 will change. We're going to add 3 to it. So it's going to become 8. Let's also look at what happens to it in a graph. So you probably noticed that I've drawn the graph of y equals x squared. Now let's do this transformation to this graph. And you can see the graph has simply moved up by 3 without changing shape, no stretches. Now let's look at our next transformation. So we've got two fx. Just always remember that fx means y, so you're simply times in the y by two. And what that does is stretch your graph in the y direction with a scale factor of two. Okay, so let's look at a general coordinate and see what happens. So keep the x coordinate the same, so the two stays as two, but we're gonna times the y coordinate by two, which is gonna make it 10. So it becomes 2, 10. Now what you need to remember is with stretches, some coordinates don't move. They stay in the same place. And I'll show you one of them now. So the 3 will stay the same. The 0 is going to multiply by 2. And it stays as 0. And y-axis stretches, all coordinates on the x-axis stay in the same place. Let's look at that graphically. So here I've drawn the graph of sine x, and you should know that graph by memory. So let's stretch it by a scale factor of 2 in the y direction, and there we have it. Let's put some values on the y-axis so you can see what happened. So you can see the graph's gone up to 2 now and down to minus 2 instead of 1 and minus 1. And look at these coordinates which have stayed in the same place as we discussed. Now let's look at this transformation. Now this one affects the x-axis, and the way you can remember that is, it's inside the brackets with the x. Now something odd happens here. Naturally, we'd expect it to move to the right by 5, since it says plus 5, but it does the exact opposite. It moves to the left. So let's try this out on a coordinate. So it says plus 5, so you're going to subtract the x value by 5. You're going to do the opposite as opposed to adding 5. And the y value stays exactly the same. So here I've drawn the graph y equals x squared again. And we're going to shift the graph in the x-axis. And it said plus 5, so we're going to move it to the left by 5. And I'll put on some values so you can see exactly what's happened. So it was at 0 first, and now it's at minus 5. Let's go to the next one. Now it's in the brackets with the x, so it's going to affect the x-axis. Now with times 2 we expect it to stretch, but it does the exact opposite. It actually squeezes in, and you'll have to divide your x-coordinates by 2 instead of times in by 2. So if you wanted to stretch it, you'd have to use a fractional value on the x. So for example, f of half x would actually stretch it. So let's have a look at a coordinate and see what happens. So divide the x value by 2, and that gives us 1. And the y stays the same. So let's have a look at this graphically. So here I've chosen a sine graph again. So I've put some values on in the x-axis so you can see exactly what's happening. And you can see the graph's been squashed in the x direction. So rather than finishing its first period at 360, it's finished it at 180. And remember, you just divide all the x-coordinates by that scale factor. Okay, so let's look at this transformation. 
and this one is a reflection and it's a reflection in the x-axis. So the x-axis is going to be your mirror. So in this case, I'll show you the graph version of it first and then we'll look at a coordinate. So I've gone for y equals x squared again and let's have a look at what happens. And it's as simple as that. And now let's look at a coordinate and you should have a better idea of what's happening to the coordinate now. So I'll let you have a chance to guess. So the x value will stay the same, but the y value become negative. So this is the last one. And this one's a reflection in the other axes, in the y axis. But what I like to do is I like to remember the other one, the first one, when it was a reflection in the x axis. And I try not to remember this one, but when I see it, I just remember it's the other one and it will be a reflection in the y axis. I've seen with students that trying to remember both of them, they end up forgetting which way around it was. This time I didn't choose y because x squared because the reflection of the y-axis makes it still exactly the same. And there you have it, a simple reflection in the y-axis. So again, let's look at a coordinate as well to see what happens to that. So I hope you guessed it. The x value become minus two and the y value will stay exactly the same. Okay, so here I've got some transformations to the graph for y equals cos x. So generally we say y equals fx, and of course, fx in this case is cos x. So let's look at the first one. So the first one is inside the brackets of the x, so it's affecting the x-axis. So remember with the x-axis, it does the opposite. So rather than moving to the right by 30, it's actually going to move to the left by 30. So let's have a look at b. So remember cos x is the fx, and now here you can see that you've times it by two, so it's two fx. So with two fx, just remember you're just stretching it in the y direction. Okay, let's look at c. So it's inside the brackets, so it's affecting the x-axis, and it's a minus 10. So you're thinking that it's gonna to move to the left, but of course it does opposite, it moves to the right by 10. So you'll be adding 10 to all of your x values. So let's have a look at d now. So it's inside the brackets, so we know it affects the x-axis. So we'd expect it to squash because it's times in by a half in the x-direction. But it does quite the opposite. It expands, it stretches in the x-direction rather than halving. So what you do is times all your x-values by 2. And it's this transformation. And the next one is a reflection. And it's a reflection in the x-axis. Okay, so let's look at the next one. This one's got two transformations. It's got a minus x inside the brackets, so we know it's a transformation, and this is the other transformation. It's a transformation in the y-axis. So in E, remember, it was a reflection in the x-axis, and again, if it's the other one, remember it's a reflection in the y-axis. But here you could also see a seven, and it's a times seven. So it's also a stretch in the y-axis. And the last one, you're just adding to to all of your y values, your fx. So it simply moves your graph up by two. And it's this transformation here. So I'll give you guys a moment to have a go at these. And I'll show you what happens. And here it is graphically. I hope you found that video useful. Support us by liking, subscribing, and share this with your friends. And if you still got some more questions on anything, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where you'll find your questions answered.